All right. Hello, Trader Nerds. Hello, University of West Georgia Wolves. And hello to the Alabama Crimson Tide. We got a little bit of everybody in here today. So this is good. So we just want to do our little trading today. Let's look at the market first. The market is dead. Look, 0.75 up 75 cents, 0.01 percent. It is doing nothing on light volume. Tomorrow is Easter. A lot of the markets are going to be closed. Futures will be open for some bit of the day. But we will not trade. It's going to be so light tomorrow that we're just going to finish up our month this uh, today. So very light volume. VIX is at 13. Nobody's scared of anything. The advancers over the decline is 207. And some of you yesterday um, got burned. And I told you AD was high yesterday. And I said, look, for the last 30 minutes, I said, the uh, market's going to go up. And what happened the last 30 minutes of yesterday is this candle right here, my friends. And some of you got burned on some strangles, and I apologize for that. Now, do I see that happening today? No, it could. We are overbought, and looks like we would be gunning for this area, the 5285, and we've got the 5250 in sight in the next 10 days. But on today, the AD is strong, but not as strong as yesterday. So we may not see such a big movement into the close, but be careful uh, fading a lightly traded market because it can rip in no time. So y'all be really careful out there, traders. All right, so everything looks good. We uh, we're 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 going to count some money today because we're not trading tomorrow, and so this is our last trading day. So we just want to kind of see how we we're doing. So let's see how we're doing in the Tasty Trade account, uh, the Mega IRA. Let's see the Mega. Let me open the Mega little sheet here and see where we're at because this is the one we're going to trade today. We are going to trade in this one, but let's just see how we're doing. So today is the 28, 3, 28, 24, and we are at, pull that back up, 188, 110, 188, 110, 188, 110, fire up the band, Rico! Now, let's really see how we've done here. Let's see if we can do this. So February, I've already added that. Let's see what we did for March. In March, we had $100,000 come out of the account that I transferred over. So $100,000 came out. Let's see how we did here. Let's go over here. $100,000. And so we took $100,000 out. And we ended the month at, let's see how much we made here. We ended the month, if we ended the day, 188, 110. 188, 110. 188, 110. Okay, so this is kind of cool, right? Let's look at this. So we are up 1.13% in the month of January. We're up 3.55%. In February, we're up 1.89% here, y'all. We are doing great. Look at this. So we are on track for 6.56% for the year. Now, remember, I am aiming at 2%. So this means that we are doing over 2% a month, which is really, really good. This is really, really good. So that looks good. So now let's go and look at the other Tasty account that we've got here. And let's just see what this one's working on. This is one we traded yesterday, but let's go ahead and um, 328.24. Let's see what this one's trading at. So let's find it. Uh, which one is this? This is uh, this one. There we go. So we're at 45.838. 45,838. 45, 838. Fire up the band, Rico. We made a little bit of money. All right. So we said that we are at 45, 838. We're up 9% on the year. This is great, yo. 45, 838. Let's put that in here. 45, 838. 
So we're up 4%, 7%. This is great, y'all. Oh, my gosh, 9.07%. Wow. Waka, 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 waka. All right, so let's see, uh, let's see our couple of other counts that we trade here. So let's find the IRA and find out how we're doing on it. So the IRA account is over here. So let's go to IRA, which is this one, I believe. And let's see how good we're doing on this one this year. Beta wait to my spy. All right. So let's go over here. And let's go. God, all them orders getting filled now. Go over here. We are at 73,666. Yeah. I don't like that. How about 73,672? 73,672. 73. 672. Fire up the band Rico. So in this account, we're up one, two, three, four, five, six something percent. Let's see. We're up five point three, four, five. Okay, we're at five point seven one percent on the year. Beautiful, y'all. Very good. All right, let's see the Roth IRA. Let's see how the little Roth IRA is doing. So let's find him. So got all these accounts we're trading. I think this is the last one I got that's going on. All right, so let's do, let's put today's date in. 3, 28, 24. And this one is, let's see, this account. And the net lick over here is 57097. 57096. 57096. 57096. Fire up the band, Rico. Well, so in this account, we are up 57096. 57096. So we made 2.2%. Three. This one isn't doing that good, is it? I got to get more theta in there. We're at 3.64%. Or else we need to get that one going. What is wrong with you? Anyway, that's it's still up though. So we are up. Let's see how much on this account. We're up $2,026 here. Let's just count the money. You got to know when to count it, know when to fold them, know when to walk away. So we're at 2026 in this account. That's the IRA. That's the Roth IRA. So let's pull up the regular IRA again. So the regular IRA is Roth IRA. IRA. So over here, we're up $4,043 plus. Four thousand forty-three dollars plus. So I got two IRAs out of the way, and then we got the Tasty Mega account. So in this one, we're up eighteen four twelve fifty-two. Eighteen four twelve fifty-two, and then we got the other account. Come here, little feller. We got the Tasty Trade account. And in this one, we're up 38.12. Y'all, that ain't bad. Look at that. In the first three months of the year, you and I have made $28,293.52 accounts on these accounts that I trade publicly. Isn't that great? Shooting our little B strategy. I think it's really good. All right, so now today, so we counted our money. You got to know when to hold them, know when to fold them, know when to walk away. You never count your money. When you're sitting at the table, y'all know that. So now let's go to the mega account, and let's do a little teaching here. So this is our net lick today. It's $188,000. let us go into our Greeks and ratios. Now, remember, we want to keep our deltas at 0.15%. Times our net lick, and net lick is nothing more than your account value. So uh, we want it to be no more than 0.15 times our net lick. So let's go pull that up. 
and see what our deltas are in this account. So we'll go here. Let me hide everything. And there we go. Make sure we got the right account. And that should be the 72 account. Let me click this. Unclick that. Click this. Got so many accounts. I'm sorry, y'all. So the deltas are 183. Let's put that in. 183. All right. And we want our theta to be 0.1% or higher. So our theta is the fuel that we put into our account. And our theta over here is only a measly 45. Now, remember, we talked yesterday, and Hal had a good, good point, that that black swan hedge that we put on has what we refer to as negative theta. So let's see what the VIX is. So when the VIX at 14, let's see here, chart. VIX, no, is at 12.98. So let's just say 13. VIX is at 13. And then our buying power that we use it says that we're using 68,000 of our buying power, but we don't want to include bill. So let's see, we're using 50, 73, make sure that's right, $50,000 in capital we're using. God, that looks for fast. What's wrong with this? Did I have an order fail or something? We'll have to look at that because uh, make sure I'm on the right thing. Make sure I'm on the right account. Yeah, I got so many. All right, yeah. Uh, buying power 68%, but we're only using 50,000 in our ES positions. So let's put that in. That means I think surely we've had a trade to fill. Let's see if that's the case. Let's go look at our orders here. So we go to activity and let's see field. And let's see, 326. We bought those 25. We knew that. Let me change this just to make sure that we're picking up. Yeah. Okay. We picked up those 25 the other day. Okay. That's fine. So here's what we want to do. We're very low, y'all, in our theta. We're really low in our theta. We're low in our buying power. So what we need to do is to start some other trades. So let's see if any of our trades need to close. Now, remember what we do is we hold these trades for 15 weeks, and then we close them. So let's see if anything tells us that we ought to close it today. My spreadsheet normally tells me. All right, we've got some put debit spreads that are coming off today. Those will expire worthless. Let's put zero, zero, and zero there. And then let's go out to the right and act like we're closing them today. So we'll put today's date. Control, colon, control, colon, control, colon. Those are absolute losers. And we expect that to be the case. So let's just say that we've got just the blanks there. Now, to get through to that, and let's see if there's an auto close signal and anything else. There is not. And our typical position sizing, y'all, is looks like we're doing one per week, but we are down so much on theta and we just don't have enough trades in that I'm probably going to do two contracts today. Or I tell you what, I think I may just do one contract today, like it says, and then we'll put on some more black swan hedges. Uh, we'll start some additional tranches of those. So let's do that. Let's just do one, 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 one today. So the one, one, one trade, pretty, pretty simple. It's selling a naked put. Let me show you how to do it. You go, we want to trade ES. So I click on ES. Right, that's the E-mini S&P 500 futures. Click on the trade tab. Go to the table. We want to go to 120 days. So there's 113, 125. So let's go to 125. That's closest. And we want to sell the 10% probability of being in the money or the 10 delta. Right? These are approximations of each other. But I will go to the 10% probability of being in the money, and let's sell this 4750 and I'm going to bump that up to the mid price, $32, and try to sell that. So let's see if we can get that little puppy in. Come here, little feller. Come here, little feller. Let's get our working orders. $31.75 didn't fail, so make it less advantageous. Instead of us bringing in $32, we're going to bring in $31.75. And that failed. There you go, baby. So that was, hundred. what did I say, 125 days. And we sold the forty-seven fifty. 
3175. 4750. 3175. 4750 is our strike. And we said we sold it for 3175. And that's a naked put, y'all. That's what selling the put is. So we'll go here. We did ES. And we did one of these little puppies. And we'll call this a naked put 20. Be our 20th one doing it. It was a put, it's a naked, and it was 125 days. And we did it today. There. Good. Brought in $1,585 on that, y'all. Wow. Waka waka. So now we got to do a puts debit spread. And I'll show you about the put debit spread. It's kind of cool. So we'll do one of those. And we'll call this PDS20. And this is going to be a put, and it's going to be a debit spread. It's going to be in the same expiration, 125. And control, enter. All right, so let's see if we can do this. Now, go to the trade tab. Go to that same 120 days, 125 days right here. Now, this is neat. I want you to see this. This is the put debit spread. So it's about, we started at about a 25% probability of being in the money or a 25 delta. So I'm going to do the 5150, buy it, and I'm going to sell the 5100. Uh-oh. I see it. Where'd they go? I'm going to buy this, this, and then I'm going to sell this. This is a put debit spread. And that says for 1050. So what's this? That's a little more than I want to spend. So I'm going to move it down and buy something cheaper. Look at this, y'all. Now that's 875. So let's make that go for eight. So we're doing the 5100, 5050 for 880. Let's do one of those. Come on, little cow feller. There we go. 880. So 5100, 5050. Let's make sure that happened. 880, 5100, 5050, 880, 5100, 5050 for 880. And I want you to show you the risk profile. Now, my Alabama class, if any of you guys are here today, I showed y'all this yesterday um, to what it looks like, but my West Georgia people didn't get to see it. So let's see if we can look at this and see what it looks like. So if I'm clicking that and that, that's what we bought and sold. And then we do one of these. What does this trade look like? So let's go over here. Let's get all of those off and let's just get the ones this. So you can see what a one, one, one trade looks like. This is beautiful. Click on the curve, click on analysis. And now what's this, y'all? Here's what I like. Remember, you hear me talk about it in class so much time. Y'all got a 95% probability of making a profit. I'm bringing in $1,163 of premium. It's got positive delta. I'm making $20 of theta decay a day. So that means I should make $20 a day on this trade, not linearly, but overall over the average. My max profit is $3,662. And then your max loss is $233,000. But... That's if the E-minis go to zero. And if that happens, I'll be living in a hut, spearing uh, antelopes and cantaloupes, all right, trying to eat and live off the land. Uh, also, my broker thinks that my maximum risk on this is about $80,000, $8,000. So I put $8,000 up for the trade. Now watch what the trade looks like. Here's where the current price of the underlying is. So here we are. And this orange line is the T0 line. That's time today. So if the market were to go down today, well, here I lose $2,000, right? Wow, that's a lot losing on this trade. But look what happens at expiration. At expiration, I've got $3,662 if price goes into this tent. So what I want to happen is I'd love to have a grind down market that the market goes down slowly and gets into this tent right here. And when it gets into this tent right here, at expiration, look, y'all, this is how much money I'm making. Isn't that cool? So what's what happens? Now, again, there's a T-zero line. If this were to happen today, I'm down 
$1,100, $1,300 if I'm down in here. At expiration, $3,600. And as time goes on, this is T0 line of what happens today goes up with time. What's this? Let me show you this. So today's 328. What's this line rise up and go into this little hump here? So as time goes on, I'm moving the days forward. Look what happens. That line starts going up. Oh, and it's beautiful. It's gorgeous. It's oh my God. And then if it happened on 618, look, if the market went down 618, look, I'm up uh $1,300 right there. Isn't that great? I mean, where what America can you do this kind of stuff? I mean, I'll be out outlawed. I got a 95% probability of making a penny. I'll take those odds any day. Now, you might say, but Bob, hey, Bob, Bob, what is your risk there, big old man? Well, the risk is if the market goes down, 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 down. Because look at this. I mean, today I'd be down $4,200. It'd be better if it happened at expiration. I'd only be down $2,300. But as you see, the losses can be horrific. But we have some plans on what to do before we get there. So again, let's let's re, let's uh, review a couple of things. The spreadsheet, and everybody now has a spreadsheet in my class. I have uploaded the spreadsheet to the class, so you have this, so you see my things. But here's where I run the portfolio. I run it from this. I keep up with three metrics: deltas, theta, buying power. Deltas should be no more than 0.15 times my thing, so it lit up green, so that's fine. My theta should be 0.1, so I don't have any theta. And my buying power should be uh, up to 50% based on my current parameter. Now, I told you that my theta was really low. Now we So we put on the trade. What's my theta now? Theta went up to 66 when I first recorded it today, it was 45. So now it's 66. So basically, this tells me that I can actually sell some hedges that will uh, get me, or at least start some hedges that will get me into a better position theta-wise. So let's start that. So last time that we did selling some, let's see what we did. I did... Uh, let's see, GTC, we bought 25 and I sold nine. So I could probably sell an additional six puts and start a new black swan hedge, or as I like to call it, the sweet bobby hedge. And that would be 15 because I bought 25. Yeah, that would that would give it. So let's, let's see what that looks like. So let's go to ES. Let's go to trade. Now, this one is a hedge, y'all. We're going to start a hedge. So I'm going to go to the table and we'll clear this out. Clear this out. And let's go and start us a little hedge somewhere. Where do you want to go? Uh, we could go out 120 days on this as well. So we'll go out 125 days. And then on my hedge, I'm going to sell something that I can get $3 out of. So that's probably these three thirty one hundreds. That could probably sell for three dollars, three oh five, and I'm going to sell six, two, three, four, five, six. Let's see how many, how much that takes up. That only takes up eight thousand dollars, six thousand dollars in buying power. So that's not too bad out there. Uh, now, if you wanted to use a, a different expiration, let's see what that would do. What if you said, "I don't want to do 125. I want to do something that's closer." So let's say if we did 113. And we sold something for three. How much would that be? Let's clear this. That's 6,800. 6, so if we went down here and sold these 32, 50s for 305, and we did six of those, 7,400 dollars. How about that? So it used less buying power going out further in time, didn't it? So I think that's where I'm going to go. I think I'm going to go to that 125 days. And we're going to start a hedge. So I go down here, and we're going to go down to, again, the $3, 3100 I'm going to do six of these, five, six. And we're going to move that up to $3, 305 Again, that's, well, oh, well, that's five. Start to say they moved this. There we go, $6,800. So let's sell those. 
That gives me a nice theta of 28. All right. Come here, little feller. All right, that didn't work, so i got to make him less advantageous. So i got to take back the credit that I'm receiving. Let's go to $3. And that filled it. So the $3,100 at $3, right? $3,100 at $3. Let's put that in. $3,100 at $3. $3,100. And I sold that for $3. And that's ES. We did six of those for a hedge. Now, that don't hedge anything, y'all, until I buy the loans. But we're going to call this uh, PSH15 puts. And this is a short hedge. These are the shorts of a hedge. And we did 125 days in today's day. Yeah, good. So we brought in $889 of premium there. Now what I want to do is go to my, I want to go to my uh, break-even calculator, right? And we sold those for $3. And we did six of them. So that's two tranches. <laughs> and brought in $889. So I want to harvest those at 20 cents. What can we buy the loans for and break even a dollar sixty? So I'm probably going to buy those at a dollar fifty five and make me twenty four dollars and ninety six cents on the hedge. So since we bought, since we sold six, we got to go here and buy. Right, we got to buy these. And we're going to buy ten of them because that's two tranches: five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, and we're going to buy those at a dollar fifty five. And a GTC order, y'all. We got to wait till these options decay so that we can do it. But the pro the the thing is, I'm selling six to pay for these ten, and I want the entire trade to be put on for a break even. So this is what I'm doing. So let's make this a GTC order to buy those ten, and then I'll show you what the trade looks like. It's a nice little, uh, nice little trade there. Now. I'm going to take the risk off of these when I can do so at 20 cents. So let's close these. Or put an order in to close them, the full close here. And we're going to close those when they get down to 20 cents. GTC, good till cancel. That means this order will be sitting there. It'll be running, sitting, ready for me to uh, take those off. And then I'll show you what the hedge looks like. Oh, we got orders going everywhere. So let's do 20 cents GTC. All right. So you want to now remember this doesn't look good at all. Let me show you what this looks like. Let me show you those six by themselves. Uh, where are the six? Right here. And that's by itself. Make sure it's by itself. Yeah. Six at 3,100, what does that look like? That is a lot of risk, y'all. What's this? Curve, analysis. Well, hold on. I thought it was going to show the risk of it. Why doesn't it? Let's do, how about this? Let's do trade, table. Let's show you what the six looks like. So sell those. Let's pretend there were six again. Two, three, four, five, six. Now let's go over here and look at this. There we go. What does six puts sold by themselves look like? It looks nasty. Look at this. Looks nasty, y'all. Right? Yeah, you make money up here, but if you go down, then we start losing money. Why is it not showing me my little curve? Anyway, now what does the whole hedge look like? Well, let's see what the whole hedge looks like. When I actually buy those 10, let's do these, buy, and just do those to where we do 10. When it does fail, we want to show you what this looks like. Oh, yeah, this is cool. So now we'll go over here. Hope this shows up right. Curve, analysis. 
There we go. There it looks good. All right, so here you go. This is what the hedge looks like. Now, notice probability of profits less than 1%. This actually costs money today. It will not cost money when that order goes through, but now you've got negative extrinsic value of $510. It's got negative theta in it. Your max profit is 594000 and your max loss is if you just lose the money for the price of the hedge. But again, again we're putting this in for free. So watch, it loses money regardless of where the market is. Everyone sees this? Here's where the current market is. Let's see if I can zoom out of that. All right, that's where the market is. And it loses money, what you paid for the thing, all the way down. But then something special happens. Let's see if I can get that better. Something really special happens down here. Watch this. Wow. Waka, waka, waka. Now, it's got this abnormally large area here where you can lose, and we can't see it there, but there's a, a big loss there. This is called the Valley of Death, and you don't want price to sneak down into there. Now, the chances of the market going from 5,368 to this are really not good at all, right? You would think that that's not really good at all. But look at this, y'all. If the market were to crash, 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 way, 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 way down, look at this. Then you've got these wonderful little profit things here. And, and the thing is, I know what y'all are saying. Bobby, doesn't the market have to come all the way down here for this thing to pump up? Not necessarily. When volatility gets in this thing and it starts moving, uh, these things can be profitable really quick. So we don't necessarily have to get movement all the way down to the 2700s. But as you see, it just goes up and up and up and up and up. Like right here, you would have $260,000 worth of profit if the market were to move down there. So it's just a nice hedge. But now keep in mind, I don't have this today. I've just got this. I've got to wait to buy those 10 at a point where the credit from this equals the debit for that. So I've got to have these options expire before I can buy them. Anyone got any questions? It's tough, y'all. This is tough stuff. It is difficult. But if y'all hang with me, we'll uh, we'll get through it. All right. No questions. Then I will see some of y'all Tuesday. I will see some of y'all Wednesday, and I will see some of y'all Monday. So y'all have a good one, and I will see you later.